So we have a potential target. What happened to you guys? Moving gold poles, I see. Only place we can really go is somewhere here. What does Perm belong to? Do you have friends? Oh, you have no friends. Now, these areas are really hard to get into because the attrition level is insanity. These are actually really hard to take, even as a horse lord. That's not an easy feat. And we can't sail down the rivers. So I'd rather take something on the western part of the east. So I don't have to walk too deeply into all this terrible, terrible area. Oh! Lithuania is kind of on its own. I mean, we don't need much. Right? Even this, even this little thing would be fine. Pomerania. But they are friendly. We have this. I like the flag they got. Invasion of Lithuania. A really cool flag they got. Look at us. Got the Illuminati. And bird. And a little city. And a blue sky. That looks really cool. Vision of this would be fun though. Vision of Poland. Just cut out the heart. You guys are probably in the Muslim defensive pact, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, there's even Christians in here. Basically, every defensive pact out there, anyone who's part of any of these is going to join against me. So, that's my lot right now. And since these are all Christian and everything, not much for me to do here, but look to the east. Who do you belong to? There's Vladimir. Maybe I can take this piece. Olga, Bulgaria. Ruthenia. Nah, let's just take some. After we kill a lot of people. Eh. Our vassals won't like it. Fine. Not what we're gonna do then. Let's see what else can we do. We're already working on our book. I think. Oh, looky army trying to wrestle I don't know they're just around us real threatening guys real threatening what's around us oh, look at all those gold things okay let's talk a little bit about pillaging yeah I've never really talked about pillaging before I don't think well maybe I have how to tell where to go and why now there's several things to sieging and pillaging in general. First off, how do you start someone on pillaging? You have to have your army on your land, and you click toggle looter up here. If it, it if, if you can't do it, then just hover and it'll tell you why you can't do it right now. Um, looter armies only cost 10% maintenance if you're at peace, so it's kind of good to put them into looting mode, uh, even if you're not looting. I, I didn't know it. I didn't know this. I just saw this. So that's really damn awesome. Um, or is it just looting armies? No looter armies. We'll just check this uh, in a moment. But for now, let's say you found your army, you've put it to looting, you've put in your commanders, and how do we identify a target? Now, for most that are not Nordic, because the Scandinavians, they have their special rules there, they can raid from ships. We can't. We need a border between us and those we are looting. Now, there are a lot of targets here. Depending on your culture and who you are, there are rules to who you may loot. But generally, those that can loot because of their culture, 
these for example we can raid infidel neighbors for loot we are also nomadic which i think also somewhere in there should tell us yep it's somewhere in the middle there rulers can raid infidel neighbors for loot and or a tengri on top and i think that might help too uh bu bu um, no it's not really in here good but we have two reasons to be able to raid and loot we are turkish and we are nomadic if we ever lose one let's say we change our culture to french but we'll still be nomadic so we will be still be able to raid if we ever switch to feudal we'll still be turkish still able to raid infidel neighbors so let's see who is an infidel simply put everyone who's not of your religion so since we are tengri all the catholics are fine however there are religious groups so even if someone is an enemy and looks kind of like they're of a different culture uh, religion they might not necessarily be an infidel so now that we know where we could go just area wise we should identify the juiciest target how do we identify the juiciest target really we just click through these there's probably a map mode for this where we just click on economy <laughs> i've never used that so learning something in myself and you want to look for anything that's really really green um so this was the one i i looked at before because i saw down here in the tax it gives us a maximum of 57 gold why do i say a maximum because it's protected you see this bar here everything beyond to, to the right of this wall we can loot without needing to siege everything looted until we get here we need to start sieging down those garrisons and troops now while you're at peace and not at war and they don't have their troops raised you have these two bars you have the garrison bar and the levy bar in peacetime you need to have an army larger than both of these combined if you're at war generally the levy is empty because they had used those troops to supply the army so you would mainly face a garrison and a few levy so it's easier to siege during war because there's less troops to overcome it is however also a little bit more risky because of course every army you commit to a siege can't be used to look for and fight the enemy in the field so there are such things as fort levels i am not entirely certain what exactly a fort level does the higher it is the more chance i think during a siege is for adversary effects so every month every turn every week or something within a siege you'll see some events happening like you're being starved out or bandits raid your camp, camp or something so you lose troops and i think the higher the fort level the longer a siege just takes and the longer they hold out for morale so the higher a chance you might face adversary effects that's really all i kind of figured out a fort level doesn't really matter all that much as long as you have way more troops than they got you can siege it down now also to know different between pillaging and sieging in an actual war where you want to take occupy areas in a war where you want to occupy the area you'll leave a piece of your troops behind as a token force to hold the fort basically while you go off it's not going to be many people, but you're going to shrink your army with all the sieges that you're going to do. Which isn't usually an issue, but you know, sometimes it might be. Okay, so now we know the more troops there are in both of these, the harder it is to siege them down. Um, but of course, to get all the gold that's available here, we want to siege it down. Now back to the map mode. This one is a little bit darker green than this one. So here, it's a little bit odd because I would have expected more gold to be potentially had than over here. But we can have more here than we can have here. It doesn't really matter all that much because into this 
map mode, there's more than just the gold that you can take. Because if you look on the modifier for the province, this one doesn't have anything. This one has prosperity 2, or rather it's called flourishing in this case. So there's more economic might here than over here. That's just why this map mode highlights this more than this one. But generally you would just click through all these and look at this number if you're confident that you can siege it all down. If you're not confident, you're going to look at the number and where this is. So this is actually more attractive than this because the loot protected by fort is 23 gold here. And the same here. What am I saying? So possible loot is 17 and possible loot over here is 26. So this is, if you don't want to siege, a little bit more attractive. Um, right. Also, while you siege down something, you have a chance of capturing people, of finding artifacts, and other events triggering, especially as a nomadic horde. You can see all the red areas. Those are the ones that we just raided because they're completely destroyed and they have a negative modifier too. They give a lot less tax and a lot less reinforcements, so these are pretty much ravaged. What we're going to do, so we're just going to go along this border here, and then we're going to loop around and do it all again, because by the time we reach up here, it's very likely that these might have recovered enough to start a new round of raids. So we're just going to move our troops down to the next one, where they're going to re-engage in sieging, which they're not doing. Which is interesting. So now we need to figure out why the hell are we not sieging this? Good question. I wouldn't know. Looking on the religious side, there's no reason for them not to. But it might be a little bit of a bug. So we're going to take all troops home. Just to make sure. Toggle looter off. And toggle looter back on. And now we're going to send them back and see if it might have worked. Nope. So, there is some reason why we can't loot this. There are plenty possibility of why we might not be able to loot this. Let's see, do we have, for example, a non-aggression pact with anyone over here? Yep. Plus, we did raid these and we do definitely have a truce with them. Okay. So we'll just try our luck, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. I don't think we can loot here. Nope. And I don't think we can loot here. Oh well. Here we can start again. Not sure why we can't loot in Burgundy. I really do not know. Not a clue. We have got a new city to give away. Give it to the kid. And this is how pillaging and looting works. Now, as I said earlier, if you're a Scandinavian one, any of these cultures really, the Norse cultures, they can raid overseas with ships, so that's really cool. There's going to be in their technology tree with the... One of these shipbuilding here. At some point, it's going to unlock that they can go through rivers. So, in the beginning, when they unlock it, you can raid anything that's on a sea tile. So, that's why Britain and the northern coasts of Europe are a pretty ripe target. Not to mention Venice, which is just an amazing target for looting. So, what they do is they raise their ships. Each ship can hold, I think, 10 gold. So, if you have 10 ships, you can hold 100 gold. You sail the ships around, send your troops to loot, and they will offload everything onto the ships. Then, if you want to take the loot back, you just take all your ships. They have a little uh, bar that fills up where you can see how much loot they got on. And then you bring it home, and then it gets added to your treasury. It's really, really strong, especially once they unlock being able to go down rivers. Because you see these fat rivers here, those are the ones that the Vikings can sail down. Uh, or up, depending on where they come from. So it opens up all these along the rivers, which 
Historically speaking, it's highly accurate uh, because the Viking raids, even within the heartland of Europe, were absolutely feared and crazy detrimental to European lords. Good. So now we have taken a pretty close look at pillaging. I honestly, I don't know why we can't siege here, and I, I can't really find it either. I don't, I don't see a reason. I don't understand why it's not working. It doesn't tell us either because if you are not able to raid, the looting icon here would turn red, and if you hover over it, it would tell you. But the looting icon didn't really come about. Now the reason why we can't loot here anymore is if we look at this. We have reached the wall. So now we need to break the sieges. And every time we siege something down, this will hop back a little bit. So we'll be able to loot again. Plus each siege gives you a certain amount of gold. As it is. Now if we look at this, that doesn't tell us anything. <laughs> but up here in the uh, events, sometimes there's going to be information on what's going on in the siege. Ah, uh, oof. We have a new advisor slot and a new spy master slot. Let's see if we can't give these to some of these. Everyone hates us. Oh, let them hate us. Not like they're going to do anything about it. This guy, he loves us. Let him be our advisor. And we need a good loyal spy master. Well, we got both in that dude. Which is lovely, because let's look a little bit at our laws. Real quick. Anything cool we can change? Anything we would like to change? No. Too bad. Who are you? Just one of our sons. Okay. Let's marry you. Let's marry you. To someone. What did you suggest in the beginning there? Ah, uh, oh, come on. Let's see. Maybe one of these guys would like to have a marriage to one of our sons. No. Let's see. Maybe one of our Check our realm tree. Maybe one of these guys. Uh, maybe a betrothal then? No? Matrilineal? Even then? No? Okay, let's see. She's really old. It's not worthwhile. Some halfway decent betrothal options. They're always very hesitant to give away their girls. Come on, Egypt. Who's this guy? One. One. It's not looking great. Ah, there we go. He's going to lose some prestige over it. But that's fine. Can live with it. Live with it. He's still next in line. Especially since he's going to have built up. Ah, he's a homosexual. You don't have to imitate everything I do, boy. I'm waiting for the quick one to become of age so I can put him up as a mercenary captain. That's going to boost his prestige. Alright. Our horde is swarming. And you can see 
this has jumped back because we've taken down the castle and a castle always protects more of the possible loot than a city or a bishopric would do or a temple and these guys i'm not even sure what they're doing who are you warrior army they just exist don't belong to this guy who do you belong to We'll find out when we fight them, maybe. Let's see. A preach in the service of... Nope. And you see we got 19 gold from the siege. So just sieging in itself and winning sieges is very, very... Very, very, very worthwhile. Build a clan gathering hall. And the next siege is done. We have sieged everything, so now we're just taking the loot that is left. We don't need to do anything. And now we'll use the next county to line our pockets. Oh! The army almost ran into us. They did turn around just in time. What are you good at? This. So you shall be this. I'm really glad that the succession here is set. Wow, he's already at 400 prestige. And he's really, really good to, to be quite honest. He's really good. So I'd rather be honest than deceitful. Because I don't need intrigue. Personal combat skill goes down, but come on. Come on. The good as it is. Despite the great poxning. My lord begins a note from Grand Vizier Sultan Suleiman. The writing of your manuscript has come to a halt. Our eldest scholar and most experienced scribe has passed away. He recommends in investing in more scribes. A risk or risk lowered quality. No, no. Funding is not an issue. Because the French are paying for it. <laughs> Okay, we're being besieged by preachers from all religions. Okay, we can't forget about our bloodline. Just one more foreign war. Where is that? Probably should have read about it, but it's likely somewhere down here. Where is it? Who's rising against us? Well, now don't... There you are. Don't be shy now. How many troops can we raise here? That was a stupid idea because they come out with zero morale. So let's... Raise a few more troops left and right here. To replace the ones that we're just losing there. Yup. <laughs> was not a smart move. But, you know, we tried. <laughs> I think my son will be uh, taken in command of squashing this rebellion. Where is he? Come here, boy. I'll give him my best and brightest to support him. I know what I'm doing without more men. Let's give him a grand army to take care of it. Shall have all the men he needs. He might ever need. But he leads. I said he leads and you will listen. Even if it doesn't make all that much sense. Alright, we're going to jump to our army. But there's still some sieging left done we go back here and watch our son win his first battle personally there we go let's stand down this army offer some peace 
and re acquaint our leaders with leading. And we'll see each other next time.